Just like on the first cut, sand the full length of the starting wall to create a fresh path. Turn the machine around and begin sanding across the room, this time working in straight lines as opposed to a slight angle. Work one third of the room moving towards the far wall. Sand the full length of the far wall, turn around and work back over the remaining two thirds, overlapping your transition area. Recall that on the first cut we sanded two thirds of the field, then the other third. By switching the transition areas between the first and second cut, we are able to blend the two cuts together smoothly. Many times, even if cutting the floor with three grits on the sander, we can stick with just two cuts on the edger. This is due to the fact that the scratches from an edger are easier to see than those from the sander, so we can see if our final edger grid is taking out all the previous scratches from the heavier grits. If the floor was really rough, damaged, or had years and years of finish buildup, then it's still probably best to three cut with your edger. Otherwise, a two cut will work a high percentage of the time. For the final cut, make sure to use the same type of abrasive on both the sander and the edger, though grit choice may be different on each machine. Again, base your grit selection on what you used for the previous cut. If you used a 60 grit, skip 80 and use 100. If you used a 50 grit, skip 60 and use 80. Remember to never skip more than one level of grit. Quickly check the drum and roller while changing the belt, and if needed, vacuum off any debris. After changing the belt, adjust the drum pressure to the fine setting. Some professionals like to edge before sanding on the final cut, pulling their edger marks into the field where the sander can remove them. Others prefer to minimize edging by sanding first, getting as close to the wall as possible. Either of these methods will work, so go with whatever works best for you. First, sand the full length of the starting wall with the right side of the machine toward the wall. Turn the machine around and work half the length of the room, working across the room towards the far wall. Sand the full length of the far wall, then turn and sand the remaining half of the room, overlapping your transition area. Notice how we move the transition area again, this time to the middle of the room. Staggering our transition areas between cuts helps us to avoid any unevenness showing through in our final product. Just as we back off on the drum pressure for our final sander cut, we want to flatten and widen the cut on our edger to minimize and soften scratches on our final edging. To do this, adjust and lower the chassis on the rear wheels. Good edging technique is most important for the final pass. Any edger marks left after this point will need to be removed manually later on, which can cost you valuable time on the job. Control and clock the edger so that any scratches you leave are going with the grain as much as possible. Certain species of wood might require going all the way to 120 grit in order to minimize visible scratches. These are usually the very light or dark colored and very dense wood species, such as maple, Brazilian cherry, and ipe.